The world is populated with millions of organizations. It is the task of the organization theorist to go into the field like a biologist and categorize all the different organizations that exist. And that is exactly the purpose of this video. My bike, which you may recall from previous uh, videos, was in need of, uh, of repair. Um, so I brought it to the, uh, to the bike repair shop and on my way back I noticed a huge variety of, of organizations. Um, and that made me think of the um, theories of Henry Mintzberg, who um, is famous for his categorization of different organizational forms. Um, and in this video I will show you I show you his categorization. Um, when I walked back, I saw a huge variety of, uh, of firms from uh, painting companies to gardeners to, um, uh, to, to re car rental agencies to real estate agents, um, which um, um, fit in the framework that we will discuss in this video. But I also noticed um, other types of organizations such as um, railroad companies where what happens in the company is largely directed by the by the timetable or high schools where, um, where groups of teachers based on their um, their specialization um, join together to um, to decide how for example um, a foreign language or how physics is uh, is taught to uh, to youngsters or a primary school where, um, where there's um, one director of the school who, like in, a, like in a company, instructs the people how to go about their work. Um, so there's many organizations if you just look around um, yourself, but the, to understand how um, each and every one of these organizations can be effective, we need bigger groups of organizations. The, theory of specialization, uh, which I introduced earlier, um, leads to the need to transact, so the need to trade. You don't um, produce everything you need yourself. Um, and there are two extreme forms, the organization um, and the market. Um, and um, in, within those um, terminologies, there's of course um, many different forms of markets as well as different forms of organizations. Um, and I'll show you um, now the way that Minsberg went about designing these organizational forms. So let us take the um, structuring of the organization as Minsberg envisioned it. What he has as three core elements, and there are five elements in total, is um, what you may recognize as the classical hierarchy in the organization, which is usually uh, depicted as a uh, as a triangle, um, but we show it uh, somewhat differently here. So at the basis of the organization, he says, there are um, those who form the operational core of the organization. Um, they are the uh, the staff who actually uh, are involved in the productive work. The um, the teachers in the primary school, um, the train conductors, the painters. Um, those who uh, produce uh, or the, and the, the products or provide the services of the organization. Above that um, is a um, middle management um, layer. Um, these are the, uh, the managers that instruct the people in the operational core how to do their work. Um, and on top is um, senior management. Um, I don't know why in Minsberg's picture um, senior management is, is wider than um, the middle management, but that happens to be, uh, to be the case. So this pretty much looks like the traditional triangle of many staff members at the bottom of the organization. Um, middle management, which 
um, directs people in the, um, in the operational core and top management, which is responsible for the strategic direction of the firm. Now, there are two lobes, you may say, to the side of this, um, this hierarchy, which are similar, um, perhaps, um, but different in a remarkable way. On the one hand, we have the, um, the support staff, uh, people who clean, the, uh, who clean the company, people who operate the cafeteria, um, those in charge of security. They are the support staff that um, ensure that the others in the organization can do their work properly. On the other side, we have what is called a techno structure. The techno structure includes um, those who develop guides, processes, procedures as to how the organization should be run. Um, so both people in support staff and those in the techno structure, um, they support the work of the operational core, um, but um, the techno structure does so through structuring the work in the operational core. Um, and the um, support staff does not um, involve itself in the primary production processes. So what you find in the techno structures, for example, those who draft the timetable in a, um, in a, in a railroad company, or those who decide um, in what particular order um, courses should be offered in a primary school. And you can distinguish a number of organizational forms depending on, um, according to Minsberg at least, depending on what part of the organization is primarily involved in ensuring that um, the work gets done. So at a very, let me illustrate this um, like this. Let's place two people in the um, operational core. These are the, uh, the workers in the organization. Now, um, the first form is a mutual adjustment. And in mutual adjustment, the other parts of the organization are pretty much non-existent. These are generally small organizations. Um, think of, um, say, a sports club, perhaps, or a new organization that has just come into existence. And there, if we need to agree on, the, um, uh, on how the production takes place, on who does what, um, the people in the operational core communicate to each other. At some point, um, the organization will become uh, too complex. Now we will add new staff members to the operational core. And at that point, the um, organization needs some central figure to, um, let's see whether, yes, um, needs some central figure to give direct instructions. And this is what is called direct and uh, direct supervision. So there's not an awful lot of, uh, of middle management yet, um, but there's one person in charge who directs the others in the operational core how they should do their work. And that is um, also in the interest of, um, of the people in the operational core. So it is often a form that um, arises automatically. And you can imagine that the more people you have in the operational core, the more difficult it will be for them to um, agree amongst each other how to go about the work. And then if you appoint a central figure um, who does this uh, for them, then, um, then what you get is a, um, a system in which decisions will be taken much more quickly, which is in the interest of everyone. So these are the first two, direct supervision and mutual adjustment. Um, what may also happen is a uh, one of um, four forms of standardization, the, um, the, the, and that then leads to, in total, the six forms that Minsberg distinguishes. And the first is the standardization of work, in which case there's someone in the techno structure, and that person um, designs rules that, that structure the, and the work in the operational core. So people in the operational core, say, when running a train, they know exactly when to leave at the station, um, what speed to maintain, because that is already described in the procedures. Um, it would be way more difficult to have trains um, process uh, or proceed through um, the, and the landscape by means of mutual adjustment. Um, then every train conductor would need to call the others, hey, is this piece of rail 
wrote available for me for the upcoming half hour. Um, that is luckily uh, described in standardized procedures, hence the standardization of work. What may also happen is um, a form of standardization that is usually considered the standardization of skills. And that happens outside the organization. So let's put the people uh, outside the organization. This is when doctors, for example, receive training um, at university or in school um, how to um, perform a surgery. And when they then later enter the organization, they know how to perform a surgery because that is what they have been taught in, um, in university or in med school. And the same applies when a mechanic is taught how to repair a car or my bike for that matter. Um, when they then enter the bike repair shop later on to work there, they know how to repair a bike because that's what they've been trained to do. So the standardization is a standardization of skills, but that happens outside the organization before the staff members enter the organization or while they do think about uh, training on the job. Um, there's also bigger organizations, um, conglomerates, where uh, multiple organizations fall under, the, uh, fall under one uh, roof. So there's a corporation which has multiple businesses. In that case, um, the, there's also standardization by a central level, but that is kind of above the um, level of the um, individual organization. And there is not so much direct supervision going on um, because the um, corporation, the mother company, cannot oversee the work and all the daughter companies, um, but rather their standardization of results. So the, um, the, the company says, I don't really care how the two of you work together, but you should ensure that at the end of the year, profits are at least 2% um, higher than they were last year or sales should go up with, uh, with 3% or costs should, cost should go down with, um, um, with 2 million, who knows. Um, so that is a form where the results are standardized and it is left to the organization to decide how these results are, um, are achieved. Now, obviously in an organization like that, there's also the, um, the head of the, um, of the organization itself. So the, um, the, the mother corporation instructs the, the um, operational core, um, telling them that these are the results that I want from you. And then still within this organization, um, there is a senior manager who, um, who sets the, who, who through direct instruction or perhaps through, um, uh, through procedures, instructs the people in the operational core. Now, finally, there's a form of organizing that um, where the people in the operational core, they like the standardization of skills. Um, the, they know how to, um, how to go about work, but not because of um, training outside the organization, but because they share a, uh, an ideology. Um, so there's perhaps um, a church, um, there's, um, there's a charity, oops, there, the um, religious leader was um, kicked down. Um, so there's a, there, there's some form of ideology that, that um, develops outside the organization and that leads the people in the organization to behave according to a particular predictable pattern um, because they share the same ideology. Um, so if you if you um, work for a charity and you want to do something about a particular disease and you start to knock on doors to collect funds, um, you all pretty much know what to do um, because you share the same um, goal. Um, or when you're in a, uh, when a religious organization, um, you know how to go about organizing church services and because that has been... Um, um, that, that is part of your religion, how to, how to do so. Um, so these are the, uh, the six primary um, forms of organizing um, that, uh, that Minzberg distinguishes, mutual adjustment, direct supervision, and four forms of standardization, some happening outside and some happening inside the organization. Um, in 
And these are, of course, archetypical forms of organizing. Um, in a real organization, there's often a combination of these, um, of these forms of standardizing um, happening. The, uh, the railroad company has some direct supervision as well. And there's always room for mutual adjustment because you cannot put everything in standardized procedures. Um, so in real organizations, you see that the, um, that the different forms of organizing, um, that they happen together. They, and we observe all of them um, at once or a combination of them at once. But often there is a dominant form. And knowing that the, um, the local supermarket is part of a, a bigger supermarket chain or that it is run by the uh, person who also manages the organization or that it, is, um, that, that, that it is a highly specialized shop where people receive training outside the organization before they, and they enter. That matters if you study the operational procedures and the management in these organizations.